His court sat in a comfy, more cheerful looking replica of the throne he kept in his castle, Ponyville, the top of Old Dragon Peak, and a small pie shop outside of Manhattan. The elements of chaos sat in customized chairs, two on his left, three in front, and Flutter Curl's chair on his right, all within a giant air bubble that would let them enjoy the show without the annoyance of constantly drowning. Trader Dash huddled in the cloud chair, curled in a fellow with a blanket, shivering. Firejack gently patted her on the back. She and Raregade were the only ones still wearing the sea flower circlets the six were given on their visit. What is with these sea ponies? Can't they stock something for carnivores for once? Flutterquill complained, looking at the angelfish-like sea pony humming to herself at the concession standing. They're vegetarians, Twilight Tragedy said evenly, not looking at her. The upper parts of Sky Ocean are dedicated to growing sea apples and water cactus. Little Ocean Heart and Sea Apple looked up proudly at their orchard. Don't feel so awful, my young mare. Discord magicked up a bucket of fried rabbit legs that would appear to be water cactus to the sea ponies observing, ceasing Fluttercurl's complaints as she started to silently munch. Poor Spike had, as per the fundamental laws of the universe that even Discord couldn't break, then left at the castle. In her seat, Raregrade hugged a pile of rocks her telekinesis had shaped into the form of a unicorn foal that Raregrade called Ruby, and explained things to it as if it could hear her. The ever-daring waterflower approached the six mares and asked about Rarity's child, having been told how much Lady Raregrade is a protective love games would pretend. Raregrade was more than happy to talk about Ruby, her life with her biological mother, Rarity adopting her, and all the parties she had with the rest of Rarity's family. Wow, I wish my family could visit your family! I'm sorry, dear, I wish you could too. I want it. Raregrade's eye twitched. But Master Discord knows the world is too dangerous for you sea ponies to leave your ocean. Waterflower happily nodded in understanding. Agripia scowled and fidgeted in her chair. She was chained to her seat. Tragedy had injected her with enough sedative to surrender an elephant to comatose. Still, the earth pony chafed against her bindings. There was an eighth empty chair next to her. A blonde sea pony with a pink coat and a seaweed cupcake cutie mark sang gently in her ear until the show began. She was the Lady Angry Pie of the Mighty's biggest fan, having even imitated her main style. She unwittingly performed her regular task of drowning out the majority of the laughter that echoed through the pure and innocent ocean. Discord adjusted the time with Tuxedo, a new one, not that he didn't have other sea pony friendly attire. It had come here often, after all. Butterco was wearing one of her own custom dresses. Tragedy was wearing a mage's dress with a star pattern. Gregory's dress was white once, maybe. He was as dirty as her. Firejack just wore a worn, formal cowboy outfit that looked over a thousand years old. Getting angry pie to wear anything was a waste of time. Trudad Ash just hugged herself more in her blanket. Schools of our sea ponies in all of their diverse shapes and sizes floated above or below the air bubbles to watch the show. The sea pony stuck her head out of the water and smiled at him. Her lower body ended in a fan-shaped tail. On her back were fins that resembled wings. Her muzzle was colored yellow like a beak. Her cutie mark was a rain cloud. Welcome everyone, I'm Sea Wing, and special welcome to Master Discord and his six heroes, the Elements of Chaos! Thank you for coming, and please enjoy the show! The Sea Pony audience cheered. My little pony, my little pony. Oh, my little pony. Their friendship was bright as could be. My little pony. Of course that was until they met me. Broken loyalty. That's a race done. A creed filled heart. Not everyone. Spreading cruelty. Cause an easy feat. And tragedy makes it all complete. I have you, my little pony. Don't you know you're no longer very best friends? <laughs> <laughs> the sea pony pulled her head back into the water. A chorus of sea ponies began to play on kazoos. You expect Discord's world to make sense? At the same time, sea glow ponies used their own light with some clever prisms and filters to present what could have counted as an animated cartoon on a projection screen. The caricature of Discord's face appeared, surrounded by several non-hypnotic colored rings. The sea ponies cheered more. An elegantly drawn title card appeared, reading Discord and the Existentialists. The title card faded to a watercolor style painted background of a sunny day, with pretty pink clouds and smiling flowers. A Tex Avery style Discord happily jogged onto the scene, looking like his single desire was to give out candy to orphanages and feed homeless families. Ta la 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 la! Jingled a voice in perfect sync with the image. Then three frowning earth ponies who didn't appear to know the definition of the word smile came into view as the cartoon Discord trotted along. Hello, and happy day to you, said the cartoon Discord. What can I do for you? We are existentialists. We are individuals, the three said together in perfect sync and inflection. We are mean, so we don't like you. Who is nice? But I can be nice to you, even if you're me. Then you'd be nice and we'd like each other, cheered the cartoon Discord. No, the existentialists echoed. We don't want that. We don't want to be happy. We want to be miserable and sad, and want others to be miserable and sad, because we're smarter and better than you. And since we're existentialists, if we think something doesn't exist, it doesn't exist. The three permanently frowning earth ponies telling that Discord. You do not exist. You do not exist. You do not exist. You do not exist. Cartoon Discord cheered and clapped and hopped up and down. This looks like a fun game. Let me try. Put on a face so serious it was silly and pointed at them, speaking in a faux deep tone. You do not exist. You do not exist. You do not exist. With three audible pops, the existentialists were gone. No bells and whistles, simply not in the next frame. Huh? Where'd they go? Oh well, I bet I'll get to make lots of friends next time. 
The cartoon struck a happy pose with a comical downbeat sounding. The projection faded to black. Discord chuckled. Ah, the old lady's favorite game. Good times. The voice of the sea pony from before echoed. And now, our feature presentation. Trader Dash hid in her blanket more. A gray-coated and black-maned sea pony swam in front of the show's orchestra. Her lower half was octopode-like, but she actually carried herself with grace and beauty. She held a baton in each tentacle and brought the orchestra into harmony, and began. I am an evil overlord! A series of drums sounded. Trader Dash looked up. I am an evil overlord! A sea pony stallion in an exquisitely well-done costume of a demonic black ram sang, as the lights shined on him with sand in the water acting as smoke. Air bubbles behind it contained little flames. This... this isn't... Trader Dash blinked in awe. Flyer Jack shifted in her chair. Some pony must have told the sea ponies that Matt's won in a different play than the bold shadow verse of the Scoot and Lightning. Discord looked annoyed at the performance, then looked at the great orange pony. Flyer Jack, you get a little more devious every day. You're finally learning. Discord patted her on the head, then crushed her skull. Orange sparkles crackled as her skull reformed itself. To the sea ponies, it looked like Discord had given his chosen one a playful nuggy. Mouth tasted like rain. Didn't need that image, Trader Dash whispered, but she was clearly quite relieved. Buttercruel said, You hung out with Apple Bloom's friends from Sunny Town too long. They did not eat brains, Larry Jack defended. Shush! Rare Green and Twilight said together to the ponies. There's a special ring in Todd address for ponies who talk to the theater, Rare Green hissed. Oh, it would be nice if I, the great and really radical Discord, could be the source of Grogar and T-Rex 2 when I'm at it. But the Lord of Tambalon and the Master of Midnight Castle were among the villains of the First Age. I am embarrassed to say I had nothing to do with me. I also must regrettably only take half credit for Squirk. He was a hand-me-down from Stripe. I just helped him find his favorite toy. Shame. We had so much in common. Grogar was a sorcerer of incredible power, and surpassed that of any mortal unicorn. And that was just a neat talent. The belly wore around his neck only increased his massive magical prowess. I still don't know if it was one of Stripe's gifts or if he made it himself. Strange. Even after Megan destroyed it, he found a way in those 500 years to recreate it. Hmm. Maybe that's why it takes him 500 years to keep returning. Was it any wonder they chose to cheat and simply seal him in the city into the realm of shadows between realities? I guess they hoped he had died of old age. No such luck. Normally returning from such a place is impossible, but old Grogar managed to break out and his entire city with him every 500 years. Keeping him from materializing or arranging a welcome committee has been the ultimate test of whoever happens to be ruling over Equestria at the time. And then he just gets buried by the history book again. Why doesn't that ever bother him? He gives a good war when he loses, but that's it. All that old goat wants is order and power. Where's the fun seeking? Where's the delight of seeing others squirm? Where are the games and seeing ponies run around like chickens with their heads cut off? What's the point of power if you don't have fun with it? That oversized magic ram just sits on his throne and makes sure his city and slaves, minions, and citizens run like a giant machine when he's not trying to break out. I'd kill myself if I, if I had, if I was stuck with a kingdom like that. Well, we're at me admitting to things I wasn't responsible for. I must also regretfully admit Lava on the Lava Dreaming King wasn't mine either. Strive felt he was far more worthy symbol of her Law of the Jungle thinking than that ugly octopus. Even taught him one of Dad's songs. She didn't take sides when his quest for more power nearly annihilated the ponies. Whichever side won would have her approval. That's how natural selection works, she'd say. Oh, huh? Tirak? Him? No, I didn't give him the Rainbow of Darkness. Why do you think I'd even have it? For a half fiend centaur who became known as the embodiment of evil for all of pony history, he sure spent a lot of his youth crying out to the moon. Why does the night reject my love? Remember, this was before Silly's dad put Lulu back in diapers. She wouldn't even talk to him directly when she finally paid him a visit. Had an owl speak for her until he broke its beak and demanded she would speak to him. I would offer the whole world for you. The whole world? Ha! You have any idea how vast the cosmos is? What meaning is one tiny place in infinity? Give me a chance, any chance, and I will prove myself to you. And so she gave it to him to do with as he chose, to prove himself to her in a way of his own design. And the rest is history. Burger and his city of Tambalon had now been introduced, along with his second in command, a donkey named Bray, as all his lion's firstborn sons had been named since his family had served Grogar at the very beginning of the Titan's reign. Trader Dash felt a sense of relief knowing she'd have one evening without salt being poured in the wounds and laid against Applejack. Thank you. You're welcome, Dash. Buttercool yawned. Psh, the other shot had a lot more action than this. It's a nice little change of pace, dear, Discord whispered. Besides, you need to learn to appreciate the subtleties of comedy, young mare. Grogar called out. One day I looked upon the land of ponies and saw it was chaos, and I knew that I was the only one who could bring it to order. First I brought order to myself, then I brought order to the first Bray, then I brought order to others, then I brought order to my city, then I brought order to the Troggles, then finally I brought order to Ponyland. So they cowardly sealed me away when they found brute force could not turn the tide of my will. Strategy sighed, wondering how much of this was even accurate. 
Rogar's origins and rise to power had been vague and sketchy even during the Age of Myths. The only thing Master had spoken about him was the least fun and most rigid mortal, demi mortal, ex mortal, overstay his lifetime thingy, whatever, ever. Flesh and blood diamond dogs, renegade changelings, sheep, minotaurs, dragons he bent to his will, and other diverse creatures were constructed to replace the loss of his previous cult soldiers, the Trogols, one of the many species lost to history from the Age of Myths. Queen Cadence the First's demise, he was one of the few beings who could promise to bring order to chaos, so more than a few joined willingly, embracing Grogar's uncompromising order over Master's uncompromising chaos. Traitors. The opera also made no mention of the changelings once again forced to fight alongside Discord's minions. Grogar's world would have had even less room for love to exist than Discord's. New Avalon itself seems to exist everywhere and nowhere. As long as any of you live, Avalon lives. Twilight Tragedy shook her head to clear the memory, wondering where it came from. Tragedy remembered how many young changelings had taken the chance to stab her in the back or pour clear acid in a drink when she wasn't looking. She politely asked them to stop wasting time and get back to what they were supposed to be doing after she regenerated. I'm the one who killed Queen Kate. The rest never even touched her. They weren't even a part of it. You want to feel hate and hate me, Lyrajack had finally chosen to say. It worked. The changelings focused on finding a way to kill Lyrajack between battles and plans to contain Grogar and send him and his small kingdom back to the void between worlds. The plot ground to a halt for an hour or three as they witnessed scene after scene that seemed to serve no purpose but to show how evil Grogar was or how miserable place time alone was to live. The characters were throwing the words Grogar is evil, Grogar is irredeemable, Grogar is heartless, Grogar is a villain like they were going out of season. I'm an evil overlord, but I'm a smart evil overlord. He's a smart evil overlord, sang the chorus, costumes Grogar's minions. And because I'm a smart evil overlord, I'll make a list and tell my minions what to do and not do. He'll make a list and tell us what to and what not to do. And they'll be smart and we'll be smart. In orderly fashion, nothing shall ever, ever, ever go wrong. But instead of next depicting epic battles or the sublime detail of strategy, it had to break down into 300 separate semi standalone sketches, many of which tragedy couldn't recall ever happening. After a long while watching the Chaos Six slip past Grogar's plans, Discord got bored and started tickling Flitterquill with the tip of his tail under her chin which was rather gratuitous since she had actually laughed at a couple of the scenes by herself. Eventually, both got back in their chairs. Tragedy looked at them, the same sweep of their tail, the way they let their hoof slash paw support their chin, but most important was their eyes, one lowered and one raised eyebrow, those eyes looking at all the world like it existed just to entertain them. Try to laugh at this! A young sea pony cult cost him as a faded blue unicorn with a brass fetlock puny mark shout out as he kicked down his cage. Several cheap cardboard cut-out Tambalonian troops were set in his path to rampage through using all four of his hooves to rip through them. A sea glow pony projected light onto his horn as massive magical hooves appeared beside him and trampled everything in his path. I hate how they're playing down little hex. It's home a lot better than that, I vented. Artistic license, Rogi prattled. I still hate it, I answered back. Little hex is my eighth child. How many stupid ponies couldn't even get his fighting style right? No, you idiot, I didn't give birth to him. I hate stallions, except my sons. I've had 15 apprentices. I've had, p I've had 15 apprentices since, since everything began. Canning Pound and Pumpkin. Stole them? Don't try to feed me horse apples. The kids were useless as parents. Once you gave birth to them after everything began, Tragedy tells me they forgot to cut the umbilical cords and somebody had to do it for them. Seriously, if you saw the disgusting state they were in covered in filth when they found them being laughed at by their parents, you'd thank me! How do I pick an apprentice? It's not like I go hunting for one when the old one dies. They aren't cart parts. They aren't toys that I replace when the batteries die. It's if I find a fool who's crying. Philly, Colt, Unicorn, Pegasus, Burger Corn, doesn't matter. I measure them up and I just ask them one question. They laugh at you? Y yes. Come with me. No, I don't force them to come with me. If I did, I'd have a lot more. If they don't come, they haven't seen the truth yet. Who was a unicorn? I don't really recall seeing many when I adopted him. And yeah, others laughed at him. They're the only ones I know I can trust. The only ones I know who aren't laughing at me. After all, I'm a part of them, and they're a part of me. And who laughs at themselves? It's stupid to think any pony would. Please always forget somebody else has to hurt when they laugh. They'll pay for being so selfish. They deserve Discord! Discord knows better than to ever touch any of my apprentices. Butterfly knows better than to toy with them. Varigreed knows better than to steal from them. Lyrajack knows better than to lie to them. And Trader Dash knows better than to portray them. Hurt them? I'll kill you! You hear me? Stupid change girl, I'll kill you! No, we don't pull punches when teaching them. The ones they think aren't going to either. Yes, I give them the hard knocks. Life is hard. I don't enjoy it. I don't hurt them just to hurt them. I'd never do that. I don't force them to fight. They choose their battles. Little Hex didn't let his being a unicorn stop him from getting down and dirty. He didn't let it stop him from being hooves on. Discord let him use magic, but Little Hex didn't rely on it. He actually had the guts to take on Grogar head on. Of course, I had to use myself as a shield when Grogar tried to vaporize him. Then I had to break his leg after he refused to let me handle the fight with just me and the five others. No, I didn't let it sight wrong, you bucking nag. I'll swear I'll murder you! But sooner or later, it happened to Little Hex like it happened to the rest. He became a stallion rather than a colt. Then he got old. Then his body became fragile. Then his heart stopped. 
thieving, time thieving death will kill it if it dares show its face to me. This court won't make them immortal like me. He says he can't. He must be lying. I hate when he laughs at me, but I hate it more when he won't let me keep them forever. Pan and Pumpkin, they were unbeatable as a pair. And they were the only ones of my apprentices to ever be better than me. Even one-on-one, -on -one, I was hard-pressed to knock them over. Because I was supposed to be fragile. There was nothing fragile about Pam. He lived up to his name. Oh, yes. I saw him break every bone in Aminatar's body single hoof. He was fantastic! And Pumpkin... <laughs> no one ever tried to fight her and walked away. No one they never asked about their parents. And he never told them. My apprentices were the only ones who never laughed at me. Or at anyone else. They knew what it's like to be laughed at. Even if it was as filth-covered toddlers by their own parents. Just like all my later students. They knew laughter for what it was. And I made sure neither Larjack nor Discord nor Flutterkirl use them for their cheap laughs. Maybe, just maybe, when Discord has laughed enough at the world, the world will see it isn't a laughing matter. I used to be known as Rainbow Dash, the pony who didn't know fear. I am downright creeped out whenever Angry Pie takes a foal under her hooves. Even tragedy shivers a little. No, not because of anything she does to them, just... She just becomes so calm for the 50 or 60 years they last before the trumpet calls. All that rage, fury, hate, it's all still there. It's like an ocean after a storm. The same waters that were killing ponies a minute ago become so still. She's just as determined to smash the life out of anything that she hears or thinks she hears laugh. But she's actually more determined to beat the life out of any pony that crosses her apprentice. Lyrajack told a kind-hearted white lie to apprentice number three once. It took a lot for her element of chaos to rebuild her. I remember when apprentice number five was smashing her way through, I think it was dragons at that point, and began laughing her head off in the middle of the killing field. Angry Pie left in front of her, reared her hoof back, and punched the head off the dragon who had been right behind the students, then hugged her. Sweet everything is downright crazy, like someone pulls a switch! And the moment they're buried in Angry Pie's private graveyard, she seals it off and suddenly we've got a wild animal that walks on four hooves again. The worst part? When they're around, I can almost see her smile. I can almost see a memory of a dream of a ghost of the Pinkie Pie I knew and loved as my friend. Grogar slowly faded away along with the city. I am order, I am law, I am the overwhelming power that crushes all that stands in my way. I am the force that bends all to my will. I will force all under my hooves, for I am the weight that chains all against the endless storm of chaos. I will be the one to bring peace and stability to all that lives under my rule. I shall return, I shall always return. Tambalon shall always rise again, and so shall I. Puppet Discord then hit Grogar in the face with a cream pie, and the play ended with a reprise of Let the Bell of Chaos Ring to cheers and fin clapping. Tragedy dimly remembered the exchange ending slightly different. Grogar had faded back into his exile. Laughing at Master? Trashy wondered why the opera left that out. Wasn't this supposed to be a comedy? It was the only time she'd seen Grogar laugh, or Master so furious. I hope you enjoyed the show! Sea Wing swam out and took a bow as musicians and actors and effects crew did the same. It... it made me laugh, Dash smiled inside of herself. Firejack gently hugged her. I can't wait to tell your brothers and sisters at home, Ruby. Say hello to them for me! Sea Wing bowed. Agrippa and Fluttercrow both agreed and needed more explosions. Will this be a lesson, my Twilight tragedy? Master said, glancing at her. All the evil overlord this does is trade one set of predictable patterns for another. Any pattern is exploitable. Falling into any pattern is a trap. Any pattern... a trap. Discord gritted his teeth for less than a moment. Tragedy obediently nodded. Yes, master. Apple pie. Why? What entertainment value did it have to master to spare her life? And to knife leather curl a chance to amuse herself no less. How much are you sure she matters? Twilight Tragedy looked around her Spartan bedroom. Again, nothing. Was she developing split personalities? Working for an insane master did tend to drive oneself insane, and she had served him for at least a thousand years. Why did Angry Pie suddenly come to mind? Well, Tragedy was sure Apple Pie mattered. Had to matter. Philosopher wouldn't leave Twilight alone. She was a sliver in Tragedy's brain that would not leave her alone. She needed answers. If you need information, take it. Yes, she would not gain her answers sitting here. It would be a gamble, but she was sure Master would approve once she had explained her snap decision to follow an impulse. It was the sort of thing Master would do, after all. I sat in the garden again, coming here and thinking whether or not to finally go through with my plan. Fluttercurl and Angry Pie were practicing on a filly they had brought to the castle to sate Fluttercurl's sadism and Angry Pie's rage. Larjack was with Rare Greed again, listening to her describe her treasures, and Trader Dash was all alone with Master once again. I had given Spike his watch and stayed with him until he fell asleep. So here I was again, wondering about going through with this crazy plan. That in of itself should have been proof enough that I should do it. After all, it wasn't crazy what it was all about. The stars, so far away, slowly changing, slowly rotting. Day for less than a minute this time. The sky was so random and mindless. Was it also rotten? Then the stars again, and their slow, slow decay. Did they have a point? And yet, they are so beautiful, I whispered, watching the stars above me. They divine my companions these thousand years with such a spike. This alien curiosity would not leave me alone. 
and until it did, I could not find peace with my purpose again. I do not have a precise, clear-cut idea of where I'm going, so best to avoid teleportation. Being immortal didn't make teleporting inside a wall any more fun. And if I went by sky, I was more likely to be spotted, so that means I'll have to hoof it. This is going to be a long trot. I consider telling Master or one of the others, but this is going to be hard enough without outside interference. Outside opinion may taint your findings. Outside bias will taint the data, after all. It's best to go it alone. I pass the maids as I go, all of them with smiles on their faces as they use their rags and buckets to dirty up the castle to keep it from becoming clean. But depending on what Master has raining, that's sometimes how his own looks. Sometimes he plays with them by making it rain soap and water. That pony that circles the castle gets a smile when that happens, and she watches the bubbles float by. Outside the tea kettle gate I go, between the bike helmet gate and the East Dakota gate. At least I didn't turn into a giant snail, chicken, or rolling dragon egg this time, going through the passage. Go away! I'm not going to stop! Not when it's for her! It was her again. Crippled wings, formerly broken legs that hadn't set right, really shaped up in her back, being bounced by the blackbirds. Best to just pass her by, and... I'm curious what her name is. I've, I've always been curious what her name is, but I've only put minimal effort into it before. One curiosity makes another harder to bear. She just keeps up her rambling, and the birds just keep trying to peck apart her cargo. One thousand years and they've still not managed to get it from her. You shouldn't get distracted. I shouldn't get distracted, but I'm doing this to unburden this new curiosity. And for a bit, and for a jewel. Primary obstacle, blackbirds. Solution, remove. A blast of ice magic and the birds were sealed inside some ice cubes until they melted out or they re-manifested. Either way, they're out of my way for now. The grey pony just kept mumbling to herself. Go away, just go away! Hello, I said in the sternest, hardest voice I could manage. Nothing. I stood in front of her. She bumped right into me and tried to keep going. I held her up with my magic. Now I had her attention. No, oh, stop! Let me go! Don't let them hurt her! What is your name? Let me go! Let her go! She said he wouldn't cheat! This was useless. I released her, and began walking backward as I continued to trot. It's surprising how fast you can trot with those hurt legs. I froze the birds. What is your name? She actually startled, but kept trotting like always. Y you froze the- They'll melt sooner or later. I froze them to ask you a question. Consider the reprieve of trade for the information I want. What is your name? It's- Her name is Dinky. She glanced at the muffin. I suppressed a groan. I didn't need to know the name of baked goods. What is your name? It's- Her name is Dinky, and my mother daughter's name is Sparkler, and- What is your name? I'll freeze them for a little longer if you tell me. I felt dirty being reduced to deals. Ditsy do. Or maybe it's Derpy Hooves. Maybe Burf? Ponies don't have two names. What's your name? Twilight Tragedy. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. I was the one supposed to be asking my questions. Okay, I think it might have been something else. We've never spoken before. Wiffle wiffle wiffle. What? Sorry, sometimes my elf doesn't say what I want it to say. It's always been like that. I sometimes confuse west and north too. Not that big a loss. In Master's world. Thank you for stopping the birds. I did it only because I wanted to speak to you without interference. Well, a thing. Thank you. You are welcome. Excuse me. We don't have to blow. Sorry, but I have somewhere I'm going, and I won't be able to think straight until I've learned what's there. It's been so long since I blocked with some pony. We can speak again when I am not busy. All right. Having burned enough time on an impulse, Master would approve. I continued toward my destination in the gallop. But, as promised, I quickly refroze the birds so they'd stay sealed a little while longer. I see Miss Tragedy run away to wherever she's going to. Her face is so blank. It feels so familiar. It's been so long since... since I've spoken to any pony. Lord Discord makes sure my memories don't fade no matter how many years pass. I remember Dinky's every smile, every skip. I remember the Doctor used to be a lot nicer too. Now he acts just like Lord Discord. I only know this because the Doctor comes out sometimes. He calls himself the Valiard now. He, Fluttershy who isn't Fluttershy, and Discord sometimes come out here for funny face-making contests. Once Lord Discord had the Doctor, Lord Discord didn't stop, not for a moment. The Doctor kept screaming, his voice constantly changing, but I knew it was him. And one voice started laughing. The voice laughs inside the castle. The Doctor of Law will be the God of Chaos, we've got to love irony. I don't regret that I love my daughters again. Not for an instant. I remember Sparkler. Every gem, every pout. I remember Lord Discord making her a dancing purple crystal statue. They push me forward, they keep me from falling, they lead the way. And why I haven't given up. And why I won't give up. I won't abandon my babies. No matter how tiny the hope, I won't throw it away. If I have saved Dinky, I'll save Sparkler. After that, maybe I can save the Doctor too. I risk rolling one of my eyes back toward the big ice cubes with the blackbirds in them, slowly cracking. I never stop moving, and I won't stop moving. A faintest streak of rainbow colors flashes past the ice cubes, and I feel like a world just shook. I see the ice cubes holding the blackbirds flying over the horizon. I don't stop. I keep going. I know they'll be back. They'll always be back. But I'm happy for the reprieve. I'm thankful to whoever did it. I have six trillion laughs around the castle, after all.